Hello, hello. As you know, this is Emilio. We are today talking about how to install VMware's ESXi 7 onto a Mac. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the Mac OS and just using the Mac just to boot uh, ESXi, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit today and show you how to do it and go through those steps. Before we do that, please remember, as always, to subscribe to my channel, clicking on that button and clicking on the bell to make sure that you're kept up to date with everything that I'm releasing. All right, so we've got ourselves a Mac. It could be a new Mac, it could be an old Mac, it doesn't matter, but you want to install ESXi 7. Now we're not talking about setting this up in a virtual environment. You can get, for example, VMware Fusion, which is an awesome product, uh, and you can install ESXi and have it running within a virtual environment inside the Mac, essentially side by side. We're not covering that. We're actually sort of looking at the guide on how to install it natively, running natively on your Mac. What you're gonna to need to do is get yourself a USB stick, get yourself a copy of VMware's ESXi 7, which you can download completely for free. I've got a, a link down the bottom in my description on where to find ESXi 7, so you can download it, you register, you have a serial number, you're fully legit, and you can use it fully for free forever. And uh, you get it onto the USB stick, You boot it onto the USB stick, and then we install it on our Mac. We're gonna now cross over to my computer on my Mac, and we're gonna show you how to create, firstly, create that USB stick so that is bootable with ESXi 7. We're gonna use some software that essentially makes that USB stick bootable so that when you start up your Mac, you can actually select it. You can also do this on a Windows or a Linux computer as well. Essentially, all we need is the ISO for the ESXi 7. Use some software to create that bootable USB with the ESXi 7 ISO. Let's cross over to my Mac right now and we go through those steps. Now, there are two things that you need to do to get this ready to go. The first is to go and get yourself the VMware uh, ESXi 7 installer. The second thing is you need to get yourself a USB stick to install that ESXi 7 ISO and actually make that USB stick bootable. Now we use some software that we're gonna go and download. We're gonna go through that briefly here. So the tool that we're gonna be using is a tool called UNet Boot In. It's available for Windows, for Mac, on Linux. You need to get the ESXi 7 uh, mounted onto this USB stick and make that USB stick bootable. Plug it in to your Mac, you then boot it up, you can then mount that USB stick and then install ESXi 7. So we've gone and downloaded this software uh, through here. This is the website uh, and we've got it right here on our desktop. We've opened it up and here is the application right here. In here, there are two options. There's distribution, but we're gonna be selecting disk image. So we now click on these three little dots and we navigate to the ISO file of that uh, ESXi 7. Here it is on my desktop. We select it, we say open. Once that's selected, under USB drive, you've got it listed and your drive, USB drive should be listed. Now, if it's not, it's because your USB stick is not in the correct file format. It needs to be formatted into FAT32 to be able to let this software read it. So if you haven't got it listed in here, you need to go to Spotlight on the very top and look up the disk utility. So once we've got Disk Utility open, you'll see that my drive here is the untitled one. What we wanna do is under here, under the very top left-hand corner, we're gonna select View and select Show All Devices. So we don't wanna format just this. We wanna actually go to the level just above, which is the actual top level. We wanna select that, select Arrays, and then click on FAT, MS-DOS, FAT right here, and make sure that the scheme is GUID Partition Map, and then select Arrays. That should now be done. And now we go back to the app. You may need to close out of the app and then go back into the application to be able to go and select it. So we're assuming that's done. You've got that, you've got that. We now select OK. And now it's doing its thing. It's extracting and copying that. It'll install the bootloader, which is what makes the USB stick bootable. And then the installation will be complete. We're gonna say yes to all to override everything. And that is now ready to go. So as it says right here is after rebooting, hold the option key and select USB drive to boot from it. So now that is ready to go. So we can now exit, we can open up that USB stick 
And we can see there's a whole bunch of files in here now, which weren't in here before. Uh, this is all relevant to the installation of ESXi 7, which is brilliant, very, very easy to do. Now the next step is really to now dismount your USB stick, plug it into your Mac, and then we're going to boot into our Mac. So I'm gonna install this on a MacBook Pro. You do this on your own Mac. I've got here a USB-C to USB adapter so that I can run my USB stick into the side. I then hold down the option key on the Mac keyboard and then power it on. I'll then be presented with this screen right here where I've got the option of booting into my Mac OS or my ESXi installer. And of course that will be the EFI boot. So we're gonna select EFI boot. So if everything has worked correctly, uh, your Mac should now be loading the ESXi 7 installer. If it isn't, we have to go and do some troubleshooting, but you should be here. If you're not seeing this, it could be because uh, the ISO is corrupted or that the actual process of creating the bootable USB stick uh, didn't go through correctly. You'll see that now the preliminary loading of all of the files for ESXi is now completed. And we're now presented with a nice welcome to VMware ESXi 7 installation. So this is excellent. Click on continue. Terms and conditions, click on F11 if you accept that. So it's identified the hard drive from your Mac uh, it should be the same capacity as your Mac's hard drive. And we now wanna go and install that. Now, here's something that's very important, is as soon as we select this hard drive, essentially your Mac OS and uh, all the data on that Mac OS uh, is going to be deleted. Select your keyboard layer, which will leave as the default. And now you put in the root password. So this is really the root admin password that you're going to be using to log into this ESXi host uh, this way or when you're actually logging in via vSphere via the web browser. Now you may or may not get this warning. Uh, some uh, Macs, uh, depending on whether you've got a newer Mac, an older Mac, if it's a laptop, if it's a desktop, uh, some of these, and they're not built to be a virtualization uh, machine, right? Generally you would install ESXi on some sort of a server infrastructure. So that's why this warning may show up. Don't worry about it, it is really just a warning, so you can click on enter. Final confirmation here, uh, are you happy to now install ESXi 7? If you are, F11. And then the installation for 7 uh, commences. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, the faster your Mac, the quicker this process will take. So the installation is now completed. Now the recommendation here is to remove the installation media before rebooting. So remove that USB stick uh, off your Mac, and then we can click on enter to reboot. ESXi is now installed. It is ready to go and it should be now running uh, natively on your Mac. You see that it shows you that it's 7.0. It shows you how much RAM you've got and how much uh, CPU you've got. And it also says that to manage this host, you can access it now on your network uh, via that uh, web address right there. Now, something that you will be aware of is that it says DHCP next to my IP address. So my IP address there being 172.16.1.104. That's because my Mac has automatically assigned itself an IP address uh, over DHCP. It is generally a recommendation to go and make your ESXi host's IP address static so that your IP doesn't change. So we're gonna do that right now. So what we can do is we can select F2, throw in your root password that you just created earlier. You now got some customization options available. You can go and change the password right here and uh, set a new one. Select configure management network and press enter. And then we scroll down to IPv4 configuration. So right in here, you'll see that by default, it says use dynamic uh, IP, which is your DHCP. We're gonna go and select set static IP. And then we can actually go and manually put in the IP address that we want to use. So I'm gonna just say, I want this to be 172.16.1.120. Of course, you'll input your IP address that is relevant for your network at home. It could be 192.168.something.something. In my case, it's 172.16. And we're gonna say enter. And that is now set. So you'll see that the IP on the top right there says 161.120. Uh, you can also go and configure your DNS right here. Set a primary and a secondary DNS as you so choose to. And then we can just go back. Because you have made some changes, it's gonna ask you to sort of restart your management network, essentially the, the management component of the network on your ESXi. We're gonna say Y for yes. 
and that is good. Now there are some other things that you can go and do inside the configuration area. We're not gonna cover that in this video. Now that the Mac is set up, ESXi is running, you don't have to do really anything else on that Mac other than really leaving it on so that you can access it from another computer. You can now open up uh, the web browser and navigate to the IP address which is listed on your Mac. So mine being 172.16.1.120. So I'm gonna open up a web browser and connect to that. So I've just logged into another Mac that I've got and I'm going to uh, connect to my ESXi host via my browser. And the great thing is that you can do this really from any computer. You can do this from a Windows computer, from a Linux computer, even from your smartphone, as long as everything is on the same network. So I'm gonna to navigate to my IP address, which I remember was 172.16.1.120 and press enter. It's gonna give me some certification stuff. Essentially, it's because it's not a secure thing. I don't have an SSL certificate against it, but that's fine. You can just say proceed. And there is my login. So this is now VMware ESXi. I can now log in right here with my root credentials. So here it is, fully up and running, version seven. Very, very cool, running on our Mac. So you can go and build some VMs. Uh, you've got so storage, which is the storage that is built into your Mac as well. You can go and configure networks. Everything that you can do the same as running E6i on any other device. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments below uh, if it was successful, if it wasn't. As well as that, like this video, clicking on that button to subscribe as well and on that notification bell to be kept up to date with every video that I'm releasing. Again, my name is Emilio. Hope you found this video helpful. We will see you next time.